Have you ever noticed that when you play a video back at half speed, it makes the person sound drunk? Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom Tit Braid. I'm here today with a new album review and a throwback album review, all in one video, courtesy of my Now and Then segment. And the subject of today's Now and Then is Maryland-based rock band OAR. And for now, we'll be talking about their brand new album, The Mighty, their ninth album. Now, this band first got their reputation on the college circuit for being a jam band of sorts, kind of like the Dave Matthews Band. Uh, but as they got picked up by a major label for their fourth album, uh, they dropped some of their jam band tendencies, as major label signees tend to do, and their songs became shorter and more radio-friendly, uh, which was actually fine by me since I've always it's always been a little bit tough for me to get into jam bands. I'm not sure why. Uh, kind of like the same thing with prog rock, I guess. It's just uh, a little difficult for me to get, in, get into such a thing. Now, this is actually just the third of their nine albums that I've liked enough to purchase and the first one that I've purchased in over 10 years. Now, those of you who follow me on Twitter might have seen a tweet uh, not too long ago about this album. I wrote it off as being boring and disappointing, but I ended up walking away from the album for a couple of days and then re-listening to it with fresh ears, and I have mostly backpedaled on that opinion, though not entirely. Now, basically what disappointed me with this album is a lack of variation in the moods between the songs. Now, on most albums, you'll find a range from upbeat rockers to slow ballads, uh, but nearly all the songs on this album were mid-tempo, and they just don't stray much uh, in either direction from that midpoint. There are, you know, a couple of songs that are more upbeat and a couple of songs that are more balladish, but for the most part, they just kind of stuck in that middle gear. And also, <laughs> this seems to be their reggae album of sorts. Uh, I mean, there's always a little bit of reggae on OAR's albums, but there just seemed to be an inor inordinate amount on this one. Now, it's not that I hate reggae, uh, but for me, just a little of it goes a long way. And another disappointment that actually didn't occur to me until later on was their lack of saxophone on this album. Now, sax uh, on their previous albums has been a very uh, instrumental <laughs> instrument in their lineup, and it's given a lot of great hooks to their songs and stuff, but on this album, it's been relegated to the occasional background instrument. Now, sad to say, lyrically also, this album seems to suffer a little bit. It seems to offer a bit less than most of OAR's previous albums. And that's doubly a disappointment because they've tended to be one of the more lyrically articulate bands out there. Um, the single, Miss You All the Time, which was, I believe, their lead-off single, that was the first one that caught my ear. And that's one of the standout tracks, though. Uh, it actually details frontman Mark Roberge's coping with a uh, friend's suicide, which is something that, unfortunately, I can personally relate to. Uh, so yeah, that one was definitely a, a draw for me on this album. It's pretty much what made me buy this album in the first place. Now, probably the most upbeat song on this album is called Oh My, which is not to be confused with One Republic's Oh My My or Troy Sivan's My My My. So many similarly titled songs out there. <laughs> my oh my. Anyway, uh, that song is enjoyable enough, uh, although there's this weird muffled effect on Mark Roberge's vocals in one or two places on the song that's kind of distracting. Uh, but on the other hand, it has horn accents, which uh, and an almost merengue kind of a beat, which give it a Latin feel, and they, they, that, those things kind of make it pop. They make it stand out a bit. Um, probably the most subdued song on here is called All Because of You, and that it, it's actually one of the nicer love songs that I've heard in quite a while, in a few years at least. Uh, it's got nothing special in the, in the lyrics that uh, you might find, but uh, for some reason I just like it. And another of the more memorable, memorable songs is called Be Easy, and that's got a good message about uh, you know seizing the moment and appreciating life. Uh, one of the key lyrics in the chorus is, if a heart attack can't bring you back, then it's a waste of time. So, uh, you know, th that's that's kind of a standout here. So yeah, all in all, um, this album has some good and it has some bad. And unfortunately, the bad comes dangerously close to outweighing the good. So yeah, as much as I hate to say it, I really can't call this album much more than okay. Um, and maybe it means a little bit more to me since I've liked them for a while, and so I'm possibly being easy on it. Uh, 
and you know to others those of you who may not have any experience with the band this could even come off as being kind of a train clone because uh, Mark Roberge's vocals uh, sound quite similar to Pat Monahan's so yeah there's the danger of that but then I could be completely wrong on the other hand those of you who might not have any expectations for OAR might be pleased with this album so I mean, it could go both ways but uh, yeah for me it was a bit of a disappointment and yeah it took me like I said those extra several listens to try and get into it and you know putting it aside for uh, uh, for a few days but anyway, that was now, and this is then. Stories of a Stranger, OAR's fifth album from 2005. Now, by this time, and I believe this was their second album after signing their major label contract, uh, by this album they'd firmly moved into the more radio-ready format of uh, shorter songs, as I mentioned before. Although, uh, they were still hanging on to uh, some of their earlier sound, their more of their jam band tendencies, uh, with a couple of tracks on this album clocking, clocking in at more than five and a half minutes. And also, this album just has much more of a variation in sound, which makes it, frankly, far more interesting a listen, as opposed to The Mighty. And also, you remember what I was saying a few minutes ago about the saxophone? Well, it is definitely a sign significant part of the proceedings on this album. Uh, it offers up several great instrumental hooks, uh, just as well as any good guitar lick would, quite frankly. And also adding to the element of funk that's present on, on a lot of these tracks. Now, the most notable, at least for me, is the insanely catchy track, Wonderful Day. Uh, I heard it first in a couple of TV shows, I think. Uh, that was the track that uh, first got me to notice the band and convinced me to pick up the album, just on the strength of that one track alone. It was probably my favorite song of its year, but oddly it was never released as a single. But trust me, you've got to go look up Wonderful Day by OAR. You'll be hooked. Uh, trust me. But anyway, there's another song on here called Tragedy and Waiting, and that's another outstanding example of the catchy sax riffs that the band just reels you right into a song with. It's just fantastic. And that one actually gives that song almost a soul or a jazz inflection, strangely enough. Uh, but lest you think that Jerry DePizzo's sax is only capable of jamming out, uh, in upbeat songs, it is just as capable of the subtle slow jams, like in one of the most beautiful tracks on the album, it's called Nassim June, which is only about three minutes long, a little over three minutes long, but once you hear it, you will wish it was twice as long. It's just a beautiful, fantastic song. Uh, another one called Dakota is it's just another really pretty ballad near the end of the album. Now, other examples of some of the great, solid, upbeat tracks on this album are the oddly titled Daylight the Dog, uh, it's actually about a stray dog, incidentally. Uh, and that one has a much more subtle but still great guitar hook in the chorus. And then there's also a great single called Love and Memories, and that was actually their most successful single up until this time. Uh, Singer-songwriter Toby Lightman features on the mid-tempo standout The Stranger, which I guess in a way could be called the title track. And also Matt Nathanson uh, makes a guest appearance uh, somewhere on the album, but I looked online and I'll be darned if I could figure out where. And yes, there is some reggae on the album, uh, most prominently in the song Program Director, which is one of the more enjoyable tracks. And I'm not sure why, because it doesn't have a lot to say, but it's almost six minutes long. And, you know, it's over before you know it. it it's that enjoyable. And the album closes with the 8 minute and 45 second track called 5250, which starts out with a slightly below mid-tempo groove, but uh, by the end of it has built into a heavy, echoey, almost psychedelic jam. So it's it's almost like you're in a concert and this is the grand finale. It just, it just fits. And uh, there are more up-tempo moments on this album than ballads. Uh, they outnumber the ballads probably three to one. But this is just a very, very enjoyable album. And in re-listening to this, uh, thanks to this Now and Then segment, I've realized that uh, I think I need to pick up some of their earlier albums that I've never gotten around to checking out. So anyway, uh, yes, by now it's probably quite clear which of the two albums I prefer, and that is, of course, Stories of a Stranger. As I said, it's got a much, uh, much broader variety of sounds. It's much more enjoyable, much more hooky than uh, The Mighty is, but still, in the end, I'm not sorry I picked up The Mighty. I was at first, uh, as you might have seen on my uh, Twitter page, but uh, yeah, it's it's got its own limited charms, I'll say. Yeah, sorry guys in OAR, but I've got to call him as I see him, right? Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at OAR now and then. 
that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find the link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.